Okay, so hopefully you've studied up on field schools and you watched my previous video about field schools and now you're curious about studying abroad and how it differs from uh, an actual field school. A field school you earn credit for doing field work and it transfers over um, from whoever is running the field school. If we're running it, it's directly into your schedule. It will be typically a methods class in field anthropology of some kind and that's how it would transfer in. Um, a study abroad, whether it's summer or semester abroad or even a full year abroad, is actually going, living in country and taking courses at a university in another country. We have an extensive set of resources for uh, you to figure out uh, whether or not this is something that's interesting to you, and I'm gonna link a lot of those um, in this section in Canvas. Including, we have the study abroad office, but also here in the College of Arts and Letters in the Student Success Center, there is an uh, effort to curate lists of overseas programs that are appropriate um, for students in our college. And I will be working with them to create a list of programs abroad that are good for anthropology students. We're not there yet, but hopefully fairly soon we'll have that list available. So I'll send you over to where that will show up when it's ready. Now, what's the difference between a study abroad and a, a field school, an international field school? Well, there we're narrowing in a little bit. You're still doing field work, so you're actually doing excavation if it's archaeology or ethnography or biological anthropology of some kind in the field, but somebody is there teaching you. These can be led by a U.S. institution who take you abroad and sort of you get the credit through the U.S. institution. They can also be led by a foreign institution and you go and you work with them. And in that case, you have to make sure that the instruction is going to be in a language that you understand. So that's an issue to think of uh, as well. Same goes for study abroad programs, although you may not be doing any field work. You might. There may be a field class that is there while you're taking your other classes, but there may not be. Um, you have to choose an institution, a foreign institution. You go and you attend courses there. They may or may not be in English, um, and so you have to do your homework about that and to know whether or not you're going to have a language barrier when you get there. The biggest problem for students who choose to study abroad is taking classes that will transfer uh, well back here when you bring your credits back because you want to be continuing to make progress towards your degree. It's not a stop out. You're still continuing to earn units. Um, SDSU has set up a whole bunch of sort of partnerships with specific institutions where, for example, they can send students over to us and we can send students over to them and we've made it easy to just sort of transfer those credits. And there's even oftentimes reduced program fees, et cetera, associated with that in the sense that you just continue to pay your SDSU tuition and the student who's coming over here would pay their home tuition and you just sort of trade places with them. So those kinds of study abroad experiences are uh, the easiest. They're sort of already kind of set up. There's already that um, relationship between the universities. It is possible to study somewhere else, uh, but then it becomes a little bit more difficult in terms of you trying to pay your tuition and getting your credits and everything transferred. When you decide uh, if you want to go abroad, which again is a really great enriching experience where you really live in a, in a culture and you get a real insight into it, which is a great thing for an anthropology student to do, when you decide you want to do this, if you do decide it, then you need to start figuring out how you're going to take, what courses you're going to take, how you're going to get them transferred. Study Abroad Office helps with that. This new curated list that we're going to create in the College of Arts and Letters is going to help with that. But in the end, I'm the one who verifies the transfer should work. And so you would work with me to set up the list of courses that you plan to take. Where students get into trouble is when they show up in their new country and they show up in their new university and the courses they thought they were going to take aren't available or they were full and they have to take other classes and they end up just taking some classes and they don't transfer the way that they anticipated it. They were un, uh, lower division courses and they cannot be transferred to upper division courses. There are courses that just don't exist and there's no equivalent that we can kind of make up. Um, we can usually be pretty flexible about that, but sometimes there are issues that are very, very difficult to, to work out. And so you should be very careful about choosing the place that you're going to go and choosing the classes that you would take. If there are issues, we often have to solve them on the, on the far end, 
and I've seen it go so far as for some students to get essentially none of the, tra the credits transferred because they were all lower division courses or something like that. And you want to not be in that boat. We don't want you to go over there and sort of now be behind and you have to sort of make up um, what's going on, um, you know, the classes that you, you may not have, have actually taken. So it's important, again, to think about those kinds of things. Um, when you do come back, you may also be in a slightly out of sync position with where you might have wanted to go, simply because oftentimes when you study abroad, you don't want to take quite so many courses because the language barrier, or you maybe just want to travel around or something like that. And so you have to put that all into perspective as well. And then finally, you may uh, be a little bit behind in terms of your financial needs because traveling abroad is expensive and you have to pay for your room and board oftentimes and your plane tickets etc etc so uh, you have to consider all of those things when you're thinking about studying abroad but almost all the students who have gone and done a study abroad program that I talked to I found it to be a fantastic really meaningful deep experience that often fosters a lifelong love of that country and culture um, which is something that you just wouldn't get if you didn't do that kind of experience. Um, so, I guess what I'll leave this video is um, it's something that you should consider if it's within your means and something that you're interested in. Um, but if you're really interested in it, you should certainly talk to me individually about it and I can point you out again to some of these other resources that might help you figure out whether studying abroad is right for you.